Good, hello, welcome to Onion Skin. It's Particle Month, Lesson 2. Today we're going to be exploring one of the great benefits of using particles directly in harmony as opposed to going and using an external software. And that's because we get to draw directly into our system or even more simply because we can just animate normally by hand and then turn it into a particle to just give it a bit of extra flair or even automate some of the process for us. So I'm in a blank file here with the default drawing that the file comes with. We're going to be making a basic flame effect. So I'm going to add a new color here and make it probably like a bright yellow. It doesn't really matter what color it is because we could change it over time if we wish. I'm going to press on frame one, create new drawings. So the grid appears here. You always want your particles to be drawn as close to the center as possible. A single flame. I've got the onion skin on two frames into the previous. Try and lean on flipping your frames back and forth so you can get a feel for the movement. Now I know I said single flame, but it is naturally going to break up into smaller parts as it rises up. So I get to some of those smaller parts, I can focus in on just those as they get smaller. But the point is that flames are really difficult to loop. If I was focusing on the main bulb of the fire, it can be hard to get that back to where it started. But here I only need to focus on one flame from beginning to end, one puff, if you will. Now there was a video not very long ago where Tracy of Stylus Rumble showed me probably the best method I've ever seen in my life for animating looping effects like this. And this is a slightly different approach because rather than looping back on this same set and continuing to build up more flames one upon the other, I'm going to use just this one puff and turn it into a particle to create that effect for me. So looking through slowly, I've got about uh, one, two, three, four, five of it sort of like rising up around a bit of a consistent sphere. Uh, six is probably like the main one where it's still got that form, but the tail is starting to leap up. At that point, things start breaking up and I focused on the individual shapes, letting them disperse as they were. It'll, it'll do. I'll call that layer flame. And so we can continue to practice. Uh, we're going to go to the particle section of the node library and under the basic section, we're going to build one of these from scratch so we can continue to familiarize ourselves with all of the parts that are needed and the order that they go in. The visualizer being the one at the bottom that connects to the composite. It has an orange port in the middle. So that goes to the baker that has the purple notes. So those connect. And then we have the system composite. And finally, our sprite emitter goes into that. The sprite emitter has two ports. The one on the left takes our image. And on the right, we need a planar region to determine where the flame is going to appear. And wow, look at that. <laughs> a hundred frame ones appear every single frame in that small region. So of course we need to select the planar region, go up to the camera controls, press the orange button there. Uh, we're actually going to scale this in this time so it's quite thin it's a little wide probably about there like that we might put a peg into the planar region at this time as well and use the position tool here to move it down to the bottom now we need to actually see the flame happening don't we so let's select the sprint emitter open it up in layer properties and let's get to refining what we need so first things first under the rendering tab the strategy we need is use age so every part of that gets created. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, this looks like fire, I suppose. Uh, but now I need to go to the generation tab. And how many do we want? Uh, probably, let's see what one per frame with 100% probability looks like. Mm. So as you can see, this is going to generate anywhere along this region here, right? So the more we space it out, making sure I'm on frame one, we'll be able to see the individual flames more or less. I'd like to get a bit of size variance without having to put in extra emitters that are all set at different sizes. So we can actually use the 3D space of our region to push some particle generation into the background. We do this by selecting the peg that goes into the planar region and in layer properties, enable 3D on, and then open up the side view. That's Windows side if you don't have that open. Uh, and this looks at the whole scene from the side in 3D space, right? So here's the camera here looking up in this triangle view. And this white line going down the middle is the plane, you know, the, the zero where our 2D elements sit. Uh, and particles orientate themselves towards the camera automatically. So we 
see it quite clearly. If I go to perspective view here, as I move around, you can see the particles are continuing to rotate themselves. So we always see them. So side view is this. So with the planar region selected, I need to go up to the rotate tool here. And then as I rotate it to the side, I can now also scale it in 3D space like this. And notice that there's some particles in the background that are getting a little bit smaller and other ones in the front that are getting a bit bigger. So let's use that to our advantage a bit more. Maybe I'll push it back here, scale it wider even more. Oh, there we go. That's lots of size variation there. Now, as I move that, because I was later on in the timeline, I automatically created some keyframes, which is not really what I want. See how the re region is now lowering over time. So I need to pick up that keyframe and move it back to the start. And if you want to avoid this happening, and this is a technique I normally don't teach because people do it by accident and get themselves into trouble. And that's turning animation mode off. This little yellow running stick figure. If I click and hold here and go to animate off, it turns red. And that means anything I move around will not automatically be keyframed. And I warn against this because if you're doing normal animation and you turn it off and then you start animating, like just normally, moving their parts around and then they press play and nothing moves because <laughs> it wasn't animating. Um, but particles are something where you know, we're scrubbing up and down the timeline like all the time trying to test it. And as we test it, as we move things around, we don't want it to be getting keyframed everywhere. I want to be able to move this region around in different ways without locking that position. All right. That's already starting to take effect. I quite like that. So if I wanted this flame to play on twos, all I have to do is select all of these frames and right click, go exposure, set exposure to two and the whole system plays in twos. I'm happy with it being pretty intense. <laughs> And that's basically all we need, isn't it? It's kind of just working. So let's apply a couple of effects to, to really sell it. Uh, just like last time, I'm gonna put a glow on underneath the visualizer here. Pull out a second thread, hook that in, make sure we're in render view for this. Go to layer properties for the glow and see this gray box here, that's a, a color swatch actually. So we'll, I'll make that like a deep red and blow up its radius to, well, probably like 45 or something, maybe an intensity of maybe intensity of 1.5. Uh, and then I think on the main shape, the raw one, screw it, let's get a second glow, put that in. Uh, and this one will be yellow with a radius of 10 and yet another thread from the visualizer at the back of that, that has a transparency in it set to oh, 90, yeah. Finally, if I want to be really stupid, I want to get like a bit of a white hot core here in the middle, okay? So I'm going to get, bear with me here, one more glow, thread from the visualizer, going down to here, and this one will be set to white. It'll have a glow of five or so. Uh, and above it, it needs a matte resize. This thing, increases or decreases the size of the, old, of the overall shape. So if I set it to negative 10, see how it like shrinks in? So it's only going to be appearing where there is the most overall mass. So it looks like something as tight as uh, negative 18 will probably do, uh, and it needs to be blown out quite a bit more. Hey, so let's put a glow of 15 on that. There we go, so there's a bit of a nice hot white center that's only gonna show up when there is lots of our matte shape all together. All right, so uh, last thing I wanna do is probably put like a bit of a fireplace in the middle to mask out where we have all of the, all of these like individual bursts sort of like starting and stopping. Let's look under this composite here, grab the right display, bring them down a bit. Control H creates a new composite. We'll thread those both in. Uh, so this space here is sort of our play area for adding in new parts. So control R creates a new drawing layer. We'll call this fireplace. Add and close, hook that in. And from here, draw whatever you like really, whether it's uh, like a fire pit, a barrel, some rocks for a campfire. The main thing is that we're just drawing the front edge of it rather than the back of it. I'm not putting anything behind it just yet. 
So we get an interesting phenomenon here. So even though the flames themselves occupy a lot of 3D space, I've been quite fortunate that my region doesn't move in front of the fireplace. So you see this pink line here represents it. If it moved behind the flames at all, even just a bit, it's actually gone behind the entire system. If this has happened to you, uh, either put a peg on the fireplace and bring it forwards, or alternatively, you can move the entire system backwards with this insertion point on the right-hand side of the particle visualizer. So if I put a peg in there, and then from the side of you here, if I push that backwards a little bit, as soon as it goes behind uh, this fireplace, it goes behind it entirely. However, I'm gonna do something a little bit controversial and actually bring the peg in front of the fireplace, okay? So why on earth do I wanna do that? I wanna use all of this glow here over the top of the fireplace, but not the flames themselves, okay? So I press enter and get a cutter node out. Let's get a little bit of room here. And every one of these threads is going to be cut by the shape of the fireplace. So I'm gonna hold Alt to thread the cutter into one of them and then reinsert all of these. And the second thread of the fireplace is gonna act as a mat against the core of the flame itself. So there we go. So they all get eaten away a little bit and we get that bit of glow, that sort of bleeding over the edge. See that? It's pretty effective, isn't it? I hated my wall, I swapped it out for a barrel. Well, I think that's a pretty cool use of uh, frame by frame enhanced by a bit of a particle, right? While you wait for the next tutorial, I got a bit of a challenge for you. Try this out, get the planar regions peg here. Make sure animation mode is back on by the way. And just try keyframing it around, like see what happens as you move it. See that? You can get trails of your effect. This is something we're gonna be exploring a lot more of next time. I hope you can join me. Bye bye